Cool. Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers. I am here with Nick as well. We are going to be talking about these headphones here. These are the Sinto Wing. The Sinto Wing, these are Sinto's first ever pair of headphones. So some kind of top line things about the Wing. They are priced at £169, $199 in the US. They are bone conduction headphones. So this is not new technology. This is technology we've seen other headphones, sports headphones kind of embrace as well. Um, there are two different sound modes and we'll get into more about how those kind of work um, later where other features wise we've got some kind of reflective lights to improve kind of visibility when you are running at night and kind of low light conditions you are getting some additional head gesture controls which we'll get into a little bit more and ultimately it just means you don't have to fiddle around with the physical controls to give you some functionality as well too uh, and you are getting up to 10 hours battery life from these headphones as well and there's a kind of additional power bank kind of setup which can let you charge them on the go as well too. So myself and Nick have been testing these over, I guess, maybe over a month, I think we've had them, maybe three, three to four weeks. So um, we're gonna give you our kind of take on how they've performed, whether they are standout headphones for running and uh, you know whether you should buy them. We are gonna start with design first. So that's really kind of what they like to wear, how well they fit, whether they're reliable in terms of that fit as well. So Nick, for you, and we also we'll talk about the physical controls as well too. So Nick, how has it kind of worked to you from a kind of design and fit point of view? Uh, they've got a good fit. I'd say they are pretty typical bone conduction headphones in that they are pretty lightweight. And when you've got them on, you start to forget you're wearing them a little bit. They sit very comfortably. I've been wearing them with glasses and a hat and sunglasses and most of my runs. And it's no problem. There's a little bit of re adjustment required sometimes, but in general, they fit really well. They are, they are the longer style at the back uh, of bone conduction headphones. So I think Using these kind of made me realize how much I like the Shox mini versions, which sit a bit close to the back of the head, because I use these as well for a strength workout lying back, and it does push on the back of the band. But overall, even though they're not as thin and lightweight as some bone conduction headphones, they are still really comfortable, and they do kind of disappear on the head. So, yeah, no concerns really about the fit of them. It's very much the classic bone conduction fit. Yeah, I think I would echo the same sentiments, ultimately. It's, you know, since it hasn't try to reinvent uh, you know in terms of what we've seen from bone conduction headphones before they're not as slim as light as things like shocks open run and open run pro which we kind of consider the kind of best kind of top end kind of bone conduction headphones but for me they've been absolutely fine again i've worn them with hats as well um i've worn them without i you know they've been absolutely fine i've worn them with sunglasses as well and they've been absolutely fine so from that point of view they are they maybe are a little bit heavier than something like the shocks open run but ultimately they have been fine to wear and i haven't found them uncomfortable whatsoever and they have been they have been secure like a lot of these neckband style headphones as well the other thing i'd probably talk about is the controls and we'll talk about the physical controls that you're getting here on the um Sunto wing which are not too dissimilar from what we've seen from bone conduction headphones in terms of the placement in terms of what they can do and what the functionality is with those buttons and for me they've been absolutely fine i haven't had real any major issues in terms of using the physical controls in general i don't know if nick you've had a similar or different experience on that front no, the control is very good. I do like a physical button and these have physical buttons. So it's very easy to know that you're clicking the right button when you're on the run or using them in general, the controls. But yeah, they're really good for on the run. I think they're easy to access. You know where they are. They are placed very similarly to where the shocks ones are. And yeah, it's a system that works perfectly fine. And we should probably talk a little bit about the kind of charging setup because it's a bit of a unique situation in terms of what we see in bone conduction and headphones in general. I mean, normally we are looking at a kind of proprietary kind of charging cable that you're gonna, you know, another cable that you're gonna have to have around you. With the Sinto Wing, they've kind of gone a slightly different kind of approach and they have this kind of, um, kind of small little cradle that you drop the kind of headphones into and it also acts as a power bank as well. So you can kind of carry that around. It gives you that extra kind of bit of battery life, you know, and battery you can play with as well. How did you find having that as a kind of charging solution? I think it's a really good idea. I think it's probably the standout of all of the novel features around the Sinto Wing, this power bank. Now, obviously, if you had something like the Shocks, you could take a portable battery with you and plug them in that way, but it's a really neat solution. I really like the fact it comes with a clip so you can hold the headphones into the power bank, which means really it's targeting those long events where you can charge the headphones, shove them in your backpack, and they'll be charging on the go, which is very similar to how people use 
wireless in-ear buds, which obviously come with a carry case that doubles as a portable charger. With shocks and other bone conduction headphones, you don't get that. They just have to be plugged into charge. And like you say, with a proprietary charger, which is easy to lose and then not be able to charge the headphones. So this power bank is a smart move. I really like I haven't seen this before. I don't know if it's been used in other headphones, but I haven't seen it before. It's a nice, nifty little thing, uh, easy to know where it is, easy to put in a backpack itself. And it's a just a good way of extending the battery life on the go if you are eyeing up some you know, big adventures. Cool. And we all, there are some little features that um, Sunto have kind of added or kind of introduced in this um, a pair of headphones that we'll talk about in a little bit, but we'll get into sound quality because ultimately, you know, if these headphones don't sound good, ultimately you're not going to want to use them. Now, obviously, Sunto have decided to take a bone conduction approach in terms of their headphones. So that's similar to so what we've seen from Shox, plenty of other headphones outside of Shox as well that are kind of offering bone conduction um kind of approach in terms of that um sound performance and sound quality um now that's obviously to give you that extra awareness you know keep you know, allow you to hear the sounds around you but also kind of give you a good balance of what you're listening to and also keeping you aware and safe in your environment as well too so in terms of what Sunto is offering from their point of view is they've got two sound modes um so those are kind of the normal kind of sound mode and an outdoor sound mode. So the outdoor, outdoor sound mode ultimately is pretty self-explanatory is, you know, designed for when you are outside and using the headphones and gives you a little bit more in terms, I would say loudness. Um, but in terms of the sound performance overall, Nick, how have you found them and have you found a massive difference between using those two sound modes as well? No, no on the sound mode. So I'd say straight away, yeah, they both sound quite similar to me. Uh, they're bone conduction headphones. Like the first time I put these on, I'd just been listening to some of some open headphones, you know, the ones that have a speaker near your ear, and those sound considerably better than bone conduction headphones in general. Sunto Wing are not a big improvement on what we've seen from bone conduction headphones in the past, but they're also not a massive downgrade. They're quite similar to what you're getting from the Open Run and Open Run Pro headphones in terms of sound quality. You lose a lot of bass lose some power it can be a bit mushy if you ramp up the volume there's not too much cheek tickle with these i feel like i've got slightly less cheek tickle although i quite like the cheek tickle so i missed that a bit um but broadly speaking the sound quality is what you'd expect from bone connection headphones there's nothing here that's going to suddenly transform this area of the market it's fine it's acceptable i don't mind listening to these during workouts but they're not really headphones i'm going to go and use outside of workouts you know the awareness is no good when traveling obviously but even in the office i prefer to have even those open headphones with a speaker near the ear i think the sound quality is better than on those considerably than these but they're not like i say they're not worse than what you're getting from bone conduction elsewhere how did you find them mike yeah it's not breaking new ground for me ultimately i would kind of class them as kind of good sound quality for bone conduction headphones i wouldn't say it's kind of up there in terms i think maybe what it lacks for me in terms of what i consider a kind of top level kind of bone conduction headphones for kind of generally for run for using for running is that maybe it doesn't quite have that exceptional kind of clarity i think and uh, maybe not quite as balanced also i kind of you know, out of experiments and you know, i went out with the normal mode out kind of running near traffic literally within kind of a, i mean within a minute i was like this is this is no good for me so i had to go straight into that outdoor mode and it, the, the biggest difference to me it is a little bit louder i think there is a little bit of tickle at that louder volume and i generally will just do that but it's nothing that's going to make it uncomfortable to use but ultimately i think the biggest difference between the two modes is the loudness but in terms of the overall sound profile it's good not class leading i think it's good enough for most it's versatile enough to listen to you know music and also kind of listen to podcasts and audio books but ultimately if you're looking for the best in terms of bone conduction audio i don't think it's best in class but it's it's good enough i would say um in terms of my experience yeah i'd say on the podcast and audiobook side of thing i mean that is what i mostly listen to when i'm running and you know this is fine it's you are going to struggle to hear certain podcasts and certain audiobooks by busy roads which is the case of all bone conduction but so what if you if you use case scenario similar to mine mostly podcasts mostly audiobooks occasionally turn on some music for a little blast uh, then these work fine as do all bone conduction headphones they have got enough power just about for um voice audio Cool. And then just to get into so a few features that Sinto, I think, have introduced to try and make it feel a bit more like these are headphones that are designed to be outdoors, exercising, running, and hopefully make them, you know, nicer to use in in that scenario. So. Uh, the first one would be that they've got these kind of customizable kind of LED lights. Uh, essentially, you can have 
to sit constant. They kind of sit on the sides of the, the arms of the headphones and they can, yeah, they say it's constant. They can kind of pulsate. This is something we've seen. Uh, it's not new. We've seen Philips have done it in their kind of first generation kind of bone conduction um, headphones as well, which were kind of sports focused headphones as well too. So that was one feature they had. And they also had these kind of head gesture controls, which we've seen maybe not with bone conduction headphones, but in, with some truly wise earbuds where it's about when you, know, you can't reach, you don't want to use your hands. This offers you the ability to control some features and functionality like skipping tracks ultimately or maybe dealing with calls so that's another feature to just make you know using the headphones a little bit straight more straightforward to use and there's also multi-point connectivity as well here too now in terms of those features and how useful how well they're executed how did you find they worked and panned out for you nick in your testing uh well quick word on multi-point connectivity first of all this worked really well i had them paired to my phone and my laptop my laptop's a really old laptop as well so it's not brilliant on bluetooth connectivity <laughs> um and yeah very seamless switching between them that was really good it's a tick from me Lights certainly don't hurt. I question how much they're really going to help, but it's it's a good idea. It's well, it doesn't cost you anything from the headphones. I think it's a nice idea. Problem I find with sometimes these kind of visual aids is that if people see them, you are a bit more visible. But it's more like oh, what's no, I no one has any idea what that flashing light is. Like it doesn't really I don't think link up to it. There's a human there compared to having reflective clothing and stuff like that. But the lights are an, a neat little idea, I think, and they're well executed. It works very well. Uh, the head shake. It was hit and miss for me. So I'd find if I had it turned on and I didn't use it for a long stretch and then tried to use it, it didn't really pick it up a lot of the time. And then if I was using it a lot, having just turned it on, it did work quite well. I was shaking to skip tracks. But then if I then went out and immediately started running, I'd get the odd skip I didn't mean. Uh, you know, I wasn't like nodding my head twice, which is what you're meant to do. But if I was looking over my shoulder or something, I might get an inadvertent skip. So I turned them off because... The buttons, buttons work fine. <laughs> um, how about you? How do you get all the features, Mike? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I applaud Sunset for trying to offer some different things. It's like, as we both know, I mean, we've tested a lot of different bone conduction headphones. That are really focused at, you know, going out and working out or, or running with them. And they all just are pretty much the same across the board. So I like the fact they've tried to do something a bit different and try and make it a little bit more unique. I think that as I said the multi-point connectivity for me works absolutely fine for me as well. I kind of use it on my laptop. I, I used it with a watch. Um, I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2, uh, the Garmin Front and i65 as well. Connectivity-wise was absolutely fine for me. No major issues there. The the kind of lights kind of side of things, I quite like the idea of it, but I do think, and I've, I've used the Philips ones, and I feel like they're a little bit brighter than they are on the Sinter. I went out and did a kind of nighttime run and Kind of, it didn't feel like it was adding a massive amount. I think it's a good idea, and I think they could ultimately improve on that. But I think it, it didn't feel useful enough as a source of light in general for me. The head gesture stuff was interesting for me because I actually quite like the idea of this, and I can see where Sinto is going with this. But I went out the same run. I kind of did a nighttime run with it. I turned that on. I had the LED lights on. What I found is when I'm running a bit quicker, my head just naturally moves a little bit, kind of left and right. And it was just, it was constantly, I think I had like a podcast on, it was constantly skipping like through the podcast constantly. So I've realized it's maybe, I think maybe Sinter maybe need to offer some kind of sensitivity kind of setting in the, um, in the app or just something to kind of counter that. Because ultimately, I don't think I'm going to be alone in that. You weren't, you know, you had similar experience as well too. So I think potentially it could be a good idea. And I, I like the idea of taking, you know, freeing up your hands when you can, you know, just kind of focusing. But ultimately, I don't think it quite works in its kind of current, you know, kind of setup. And I think it's, it's a feature that could be improved. Um, but then we kind of get into battery life, which I think is probably the next big thing to talk about here. Now, I think Sinto is kind of touting here kind of 10 hours of battery life. I think it says, you know, that's at 60% volume. And this is kind of what we see with bone conduction headphones in general. They will kind of talk about numbers, but ultimately it's really dependent on the volume that you're listening at. It does impact on the kind of battery life you're getting. Then I think you're looking at eight hours if you are using the heads kind of gesture controls as well. And then I think it drops to four hours if you've got the LED lights on as well too. So there's quite a drop off when you are using those more kind of power hungry, I guess, features. But I mean, in general, Nick, how did you find the battery life performance and how does it kind of align with the other bone conduction headphones, like running headphones that you've tested? 
So in terms of the bass performance, it was like what you expect. Like I always have the volume pretty much turned up to max with bone conduction headphones and I'm running and that means you don't hit the numbers they suggest, but you're falling maybe one bit hour short. It's not a huge deal. Uh, I'd say it broadly matches up quite well with what you get from people like Shox and that. Like the Shox Open Run are cheaper, they're slightly less battery life, but the Open Run Pro is similar and it's fine. And I think what stands out here is the power bank that does extend the battery life quite much more easily than with Shox headphones where you kind of put, take them off, you put them down, you need to actually then think about charging them with these you pop them in the charger that means you're going to get you know 30 hours in total maybe slightly less with the volume turned up but yeah it's about it's fine the battery life like i uh, don't think it really uh hurts them but it's not a standout quality i'd say yeah i think i found the battery life has pretty much been a norm in terms i listen pretty loudly volume wise and i found that you know, like a lot of the bone conductor headphones that does hit the battery life quite hard i think i did over i think gen when i would do over an hour of running around an hour of running it would drop by about 20 25 percent which is a lot less than that 10 hours kind of you know quoted uh, maximum battery life that sinto says but that's kind of what i expected to see and i was using a mixture of the controls at times as well too so i think the battery life is good i like the fact that you have that kind of power bank solution here i think that's a really nice approach because i think the proprietary charging cable i don't need, i mean i think most people don't need another cable to have to worry about and this kind of solution i think works quite nicely so you drop them on there it's going to power them back up and you do have that kind of source so it almost i think you know cancels out slightly that kind of drop in battery life that i've seen but yeah it's it's good battery life not amazing battery life probably in line with other stuff that we've seen um on a, from a kind of bone conduction point of view um in sports headphones would you buy the Sinto Wing, Nick? How does it sit for you in terms of the other bone conduction headphones that are out there? Is it an essential buy for people? What's your kind of take on it? Uh, so I think they're good bone conduction headphones. I enjoyed using them. I think they're really well made. I think they've got some nice new ideas here that aren't all absolutely perfect yet, but I think they've got some nice new features here. But they are simply too expensive, I think. That's the problem they have. They are they are too expensive. Like the Shox Open Run, even the Mini, they, even the standard Open Run, not the Pro, they're one hundred thirty pounds and dollars, I think, and they're just as good as these, I think, in every single way, except the power bank, which is brilliant. The power, if you need the power bank, then get the power bank. You know that that is a solution. That is, I think, the one new feature or outstanding feature on these that I think might convince people to upgrade to their high price. Other than that. There's nothing here that makes me think I'd buy these over the Shox Open Run, especially as the Open Run Mini have that smaller, lighter fit. Sound quality is equivalent. Battery life is slightly better, but equivalent. The lights, nice idea, but they're not really that handy. Maybe if they put a light on the back of the headphone, I think that might make it a bit more useful in terms of visibility, but they're not a feature I'd be paying extra to upgrade to. Same with the head gestures, because they're not quite there yet for me. Um, so really, the stuff here is the design quality I think is quite good I know people sometimes talk about this with shocks that their build quality isn't amazing but I've never broken a pair of shocks so I can't really speak to that one. So I've, I've always found they've lasted quite well for me and then yeah the reason only reason I can see here to justify the high price is that power bank which is a great idea and if you are someone who's planning to use these for very long ultra marathons multi day exhibitions that kind of thing where you want to be able to charge on the go it's a nice solution it's a really well done piece of kit but as it stands, I would be getting a cheaper one from Shox, the Open Run, the Open Run Pro, my Inca make ones. There's, there's, there's buds out there that have both Bluetooth and MP3 storage for a lot less than this, and that's another nice feature you get from other headphones. So I just think it's the price. It's just a little bit too high. That's that's the thing for me. And I think when I, when I got to see these for the first time, and I kind of went to an event um, out of UTMB and they showed me this and the uh, race watch, and the first thing I thought was, that is too expensive. And unless they could deliver better than what's out there then it couldn't really justify that price and i think ultimately that's what i've come away from my testing in that the sense that the sound isn't beating anything else that's out there the features the new features are i think interesting ones to add but they're not quite being you know well executed enough for me to say that they warrant kind of you know buying it over other headphones like we said around that kind of 100 pound hundred dollar price point or just above there are some really strong headphones shocks themselves i think halu nayenka there's plenty of other i think that can deliver the design the sound quality and the kind of similar levels of kind of battery life as well there are some things i definitely do like about the sinto wing i do think they've done a you know a good job in terms of design overall in terms of the fit and the reliability of the fit the light stuff i think needs a little bit of work the controls are all good sound quality as i said is good i like the power bank edition as well and i think that's something for other brands to maybe potentially look at because i think it just makes it feel a little bit more useful to have and a little bit more appealing to use and kind of grab as well too so yeah i think 
a good first attempt from Sinto. I say this is the first headphones they've ever done. Um, I think there's room, there's things to potentially work on and improve and make these better. Ultimately, I just think they missed an opportunity to not make these a little bit cheaper than a pair of Shox headphones. And I, then I think they would have had something here and they would have maybe pulled a few people away. But I think ultimately the price just, just wasn't right for me either. Cool. So there you have it. That is our multi-tester review of the Sunto Wing. Now, if you've got any questions about Sunto Wing or you want some other kind of comparisons with some other headphones or you've got other questions about the wing that we haven't really covered in this video, let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos, and yeah, we'll see you for the next Run Testers video. See you later.